Okay, uh, well, I'll kick it off here, and then I'll introduce John. So I'm happy that John Kingsbury is able to uh, go over the Passport Great Book. So last week we had a workshop. Welcome, John, and everyone else. Uh, last week we had a workshop with Treva, and if you'd like that workshop, I just posted that in the chat, so you can watch the video. The Canvas Great Book, again, and the Passport Great Book don't necessarily integrate, although I'm hearing more and more that we might get some kind of integration of the two. So if you're interested in that topic, just uh, check out that video. So today, John will focus on all the aspects of the grade book, and it's, I, I think, pretty involved if, if you look at it, just like the Canvas grade book. He'll talk to us about how to log on. He'll address the grade book menu using the template, and then also going through all the functions in um, Canvas grade book. So, uh, John, I will uh, turn it over to you if you want to do any of your introductions and comments. And as John is talking, I will follow the chat room and let him know about any questions that pop up. So, All right. Well, th thank you, Scott. Um, I want to ask, though, Scott, um, did Trevor uh, discuss with Canvas Gradebook the uh, downloading of the uh, Gradebook into Excel? Yeah, she mentioned the function, the CSV file. So, yeah, if you want to talk about that, too. Well, I was just going to share with the group that you, if you're keeping grades, and I'm kind of looking at Kata to correct me if I'm wrong on how ISSI goes about doing this. This isn't solely for ISSI, but um, I'm not sure how they do it. But for most of us, when we have Canvas, we're putting grades for assignments, and because of the way we set them up, either – point-wise or category weight-wise, those translate to a final course grade. So I was wondering about whether Trevor showed everyone in, in her workshop how to download that into Excel so that you could then um, have, a obviously, a report of it, but then you can see where their uh, grades are because the grades are going to be numeric. What I'm going to show you is the letter grade, okay. not the numeric of it. So we got to keep that distinction. And if they don't mind, I'll just pause to see, does anybody have concerns about, did, just may I ask, has, have any of you seen Trevor's <laughs> workshop? Solange no, did, yeah. Kata. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna say something, please. <laughs> say again? Can I say something for the easy instructors? Please, please. Okay, hello everybody, hola, thank you for show up. Um, so we are not doing the Excel process for easy classes, which has entered the final grade. Uh, so it's a little bit easier. Um, for Canvas, I sent you the link for Trevor's workshop last week. So you can review that. Um, for this workshop, just get an idea how to log in, how it works, but our process is a little bit easier. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kata, for explaining that. I, w I wasn't sure how much detail each teacher is going to keep in the Canvas course, or if it's just the one thing. We will just send uh, the standard gradebook and then post the final grading. We are not entering individual assignments. Okay. Thank I, you. I just want to make sure of that. Um, <laughs> the the idea of being able to translate any numeric oh, <clears throat> excuse me over to a letter if you're doing that in canvas then you'd want to download uh, or export i believe is the phrase into excel but you're not doing that here okay and I, so john can i say one thing though sure, um, please. this since we'll have a video available i would really approach it as you know anyone who might use it so if you feel like you want to mention the csv file Please do, because then we have an archive and we can share it beyond um, the summer. Okay. Yeah. Actually, if you um, give me a minute, I can... Uh, some people in, I think. Just because the, the idea behind exporting the CVS or the Excel is relatively easy to do. Okay. And what I can do is just... Um, here, no, I, yeah, not really. Um, let me get a, a short one here for you. Um, Scott, I'm going to put up the grades for a class uh, from my canvas. 
John and uh, Catalina, um, can you hear me? Yes? Yes? Yep. Good. Uh, my name is Sandra Carter, and I've been teaching at ISSI now. This must be my 11th, 12th year. And uh, usually the assistants walk us through the grading. And so I've done it many times, but I didn't really pay attention because we had good assistants. But these are there's only two things that we do in ISSI when we give grades so far. We give a pass or no pass, P or NP, or and for some courses, we give a numerical grade if the class were five hours we enter four if they were four hours or we enter three if they were three hours those are the only two things that ISSI folks really enter pass no pass for some courses and then one two three or four or five just so you know the ISSI grading it's very simple I'm sitting in on this because even though I, I haven't I've done it many times I always had assistance and I thought I'm not going to have an assistant this summer so I wanted to be a little more uh, confident about how to do it. So just so you so you know a little bit about ISSI grading, it's far simpler than uh, what you may understood. guess. Understood. Okay. Kata, Kata, you had a question. Sandra, good question. Uh, this year it's even easier or simple because yeah. we do not enter numerical. Oh, so uh, it's pass no pass. Pass no pass or A, B, or C. Uh, okay. Now, so, I've never given A, B, or C grades. That must be new. Well, uh, the process are changing. Okay. I don't have a final answer about that right now. Okay. But All right. I'll be prepared then to learn those two systems for pass, no pass, and then A, B, C. And then no the numerical. It's in the same place. And John will do a specific yeah. video for EC. Okay. Let, let's, let's do this. Um, I don't want to... Um, just go exclusively to what ISSI is dealing with because when you do have the letter grades you're going to be doing the same thing we do okay, okay? great, great. Uh, Scott I'm going to make a judgment call and I'm not going to bother showing the um, the uh, CVS export um, okay. at this point okay sure. CSV or whatever it is yeah. or to Excel um, that's something we can we can certainly address but if Trevor has already looked at it then I'm fine with that Okay, and I think that, we're good. Those, yeah, and the, for those of you that don't do all the individual assignments, all that is referencing is how to come to a final numeric grade that then is translated to A, B, C, or P, or N, P. Okay, mm -hmm. more on that in a second, okay? Right, so, thank you. Yep, no worries. Thank you for clarifying. Um, Scott, did you give me the driver's seat on this? Uh, yeah, you're co-host, so you'll be able to share. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to stop sharing? Do you want to? Continue? Oh, I should stop mine. Okay. okay now you thank should. You. Sorry about that. Yep. Okay. No worries. We're all, we're all new to this world. Oh, Solange has a question. Hi. I have a question. Um, it'd be nice to know if we start with the Excel program from the Excel. How do we get into the um, passport? So, if we could start with the Excel, that would be great. Okay. Um, Scott, can you see my screen? Um, I don't see a share yet. I just see the video of you. It doesn't look like you have a share. Well, I do, but um, let me think about. Give me everyone, please. Just yeah. give me a minute. Yeah, we'll take a second. How I, can, how I can best do this? Um, because it doesn't let me hide that. Um, what are you trying to hide? Um, the roster in Canvas. Oh, and I was going to say this. If if you end up showing the roster in post-production, I can blur everything out. So okay. I, I think it would be fine as far as FERPA. I'll just make sure to... Um, I've, I've done it in the past. Just take it out. Yeah. So that means all of you that are sitting here, and I'm looking at each one of you individually, you're not going to look at my student names, okay? <laughs> I just... Well, we're supposed to be very right. respectful of the confidence and privacy. Okay, let me let me go over then and uh, share with you the process for um, going from Canvas score grades here to um, to the um, excuse me to the <coughs> uh, export. Oops, not there. Sorry. 
here we go. So we do an export and you'll notice down here in the corner, is everybody with me? Yes, okay, I'm assuming you are. And you open this up here and now this is where Scott, you go, do you see my Excel? I, I just see the canvas grade book. Okay, then hang on a minute. Okay. I got I got to do a new share. Someday I'm going to figure out folks how to do two monitors with one uh... Okay, I see it now. Okay, everybody see this? So this is an Excel spreadsheet coming from my um, my work. I'm going to just do that to those. And what um, the reason I want you to folks to know about it is because if you go all the way to the end, you see an actual final score grade. So if this were done, that 71 is a C, there's a D, et cetera, et cetera, for the final scores. Okay? And that's what we use when we do have all these assignments, what we use to get the information summarized so that we can then put a letter grade into what I'm about to show you guys. Okay? So, how's that feel with everybody? We're okay? It's that, by the way, Solange, to your point about seeing where it is, and um, Sandra, that's that's as easy as it is. Just You just go into the actions and export, and then what I do is it's, what you saw there for Excel, it really wasn't Excel, it was, what is it, CV, CSV? CSV. Whatever it's called, yeah. And what I do is I then save as an Excel for my records. And that's that's the accountant in me. I save things for records. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so with that, then let's go over to um, the... Um, you got a, another blur there you'll have to get rid of. Okay. Now... Everybody sees the home page of the college or no? Yes, sir. You yes, sir. It. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. So, obviously, in here, I'm not assuming you all know it or all don't know it, but let's just walk through. You go to Passport Login, and it's going to do something it shouldn't do. Hang on a minute. See, that's one of the things I like about the way ours works, is once you're in there, it just never lets you out. So I, I do want to take you back to the beginning, and it should take you to the, oh, it's taking me right in. Okay, you guys know where your username and password go? Is everybody good with that? Okay. Yes. So, And by the way, I should point out that if you are not, if you're not comfortable or you don't can't access, contact the instruction office. They'll they'll help you with that. And if you're not sure what your password was, and you didn't change it, it's a capital L followed by a lowercase T, two digits for your month, two digits for your day, and two digits for your year of birth. That's your default one. And I always tell people, unless everybody knows your birth date. Who cares? Just leave it. So anyways, you're in here, and you have a, a – my assumption, cut is that your ISSI faculty and everyone else has had some exposure to this in their training. Uh, Scott, do you give them some kind of an exposure to this general page here? We don't currently, but we could. I don't know what, what Kata um. does. Yeah, I contact the easy instructors and all of them know how to log in in Passport. Okay. I just want to remind folks that you have your uh, your emails over here in the corner, if you follow my cursor. You don't click on the 13, you click on the uh, email link. And there's, if you go to the pancake file up here, there's some more stuff on faculty, staff, resources as well. Just an aside, we don't need to go there right now. Um, I do want to point out here in the quick links, the gradebook information link is not current. It needs to be worked on. We've just had a lot of other stuff on our plates, as you well can imagine. 
Your class rosters are here. You can also get them in gradebook select section as well. And that's where I'm going to go right now. Can I ask you, I know it's silly, how do you log on? Where do I go? <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. I'm Let sorry, me... Dad. No, no, there's no, there's no point in continuing if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, I see um, it once a year, you know, I forget. No, no, that's, and, and uh, Sandra, Sandra, that's exactly what I deal with, with um, other faculty that just, they only do it once a year adjuncts and they don't get into it. Let me see if this is going to do it for me. Nah. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me do this. You can log out, John. No, because I got this open in there. Well, where is the tab? Hold on. Well, just, just, just bear with me. Bear with oh. me, please. Just bear with me. Thank you. We'll get you. Okay. We will get you if you just give me a second. Okay. I'll just bring in another ISP. It should, because cut to your point, I would then just get disconnected from this Zoom thing. Okay. So it, let me ask, can everybody see this or not? No? I got to do a new share. Hang on. You can open other window on, with it. Uh, uh, oh, okay, you got it. You got it. I know, I know what I'm doing, folks. You just got to let it happen. Please. Thank you. Because um, of the dual monitors, it's the way it works in my world. Okay, let's try it here. There you go. Got it. Okay. So okay, got it. Oh, the username for me is just my last name because I'm the only Kingsbury at the college. If you're one of several with your last name, there might be something in front of that. If you're alone, it should just be your last name. And then again, your password should be a capital L, lowercase t as in Tahoe, two digits month, two digits day, two digits year. Okay? And then once you do go in, and I'll just, while I'm here, I might as well just stay with it. This takes you in here. And we, we are over here in the quick links. I already mentioned the pancake menu up here that has some other things. Feel free to explore. And then I also want to point out Canvas login is down here. Quick link to that as well. And since you've already logged into Passport, you don't have to log into Canvas. It'll take you in directly. So with that, let me go to Gradebook Select Section. Obviously, I have a few more than some of you. Um, I'm going to do my summer one because I haven't been in there yet. Oh, you get to do, 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 do. hang on a minute. Let me. Okay, let's start again. What I just did was just to start us afresh. Okay. So when you go in, you're going to see this pink, purple, fuchsia, whatever color warning that is, that you have not set up your gradebook. So what you do is you go to Set Up Wizard, and don't have to worry about the other links right now. Just Set Up Wizard. And what you're going to do is, because you're only doing final grades, and as Katas pointed out, it's A, B, C, then the P or the N, P. Correct? Okay. I just got the confirmation it will be pass, no pass only. Okay. All right. Then that makes it a whole lot easier. By the way, just to let you know, the system is set up that if you did A, B, C, pass, no pass, if somebody, you gave somebody a B and they had themselves set up as pass, no pass, it would convert automatically. And I share that with us folks that have quote unquote regular classes. And so you don't have to worry about it. But good, I'm glad that's clarified. Um, so I want to just take you through the options here. Very simple. Option number one, ignore. How simple is that? Option number two, hit the drop down. You only have one thing to choose from, and that's the template. And I had them set that up 
how many years ago when we got we got this system because we wanted a place for online teaching teachers to just put a letter grade and not set up an entire grade book so they gave us this default template option three no need to go there option four need no need to go there and most important of all you see these dates you leave them alone ignore them don't even worry about them so don't this, touch them huh i said don't touch them at no. all don't even look as you'll notice what i do on my screen here slap your wrist no touch no touch leave those dates alone so all you got to do to just quickly summarize is just option two default template you then always go to the bottom of the screen to submit always and then i'm just going to scroll it up a little bit whoops so that you can see you know you're done with this setup yes i'm aware there are other clickable links again no touch what you look for is the word completed in two places and a capital letter y in three places when you have those you then can submit now just so you're aware what I did to get to this point, if you followed, I quickly deleted my setup originally because I had no grades in it, and I could. The minute you put in one grade for one student, this option six, step six goes away. Can't touch it. So with that said, you've got your two completed and your three capital Y, so you submit. You're back to your menu. You'll notice the fuchsia warning is gone. You, you're set up. You're going to notice there's a whole bunch of links. You ignore all of them. You're not doing positive attendance, are you, Kata? No, we are not doing that. Okay, so just for you all, for all of you, if you did positive attendance, it would be right in here, this empty space. This course of mine, Intro to Business, is not a positive attendance course. This attendance is you checking people off when they're in the class. This would be positive attendance or what we know as attendance hours. Not a problem here. There's so what are you question. going to do? Are you doing grade report, attendance report? No. Are you doing intermediate grading? No, you are not. You're going to go to final grading. Okay. Now I can click here and we see there is a student in there. That's all right. And what I can share with you is this hang on we're going to just jump over to this okay i just did a um, a cropped page of my grade report so what you're missing are the student names you see my pdf file yes yes okay everybody's there uh let me and there's a uh, question from solange i don't know if it's go for it Positive attendance, what is it? And my class is synchronous, so what does the positive attendance mean? It, it means that you would have to um, monitor and report on the hours they actually are in class. But that's not about synchronous, it's not about any of that. Solange, what I would ask of you is, uh, once you're in your class and you can go into Gradebook, look to see if there's a blank space between those two items in your menu. If, if there is, then you do not have attendance hours. You don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yes, Solange, your classes are not positive attendance. Okay. Boy, that makes it easier, huh, Solange? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what I've got here is that grade report. What I want to share with you is I cropped out the student names over here. The NR means normal registration. That's all it means. You would have thought they would have come up with something better than that because normally in acronyms the N is not good. You know, there's something wrong with an N. Okay, so what I've got is I've got three cells in which I could do something, and actually a fourth one here. Now, I'm going to look to Kata on this, and I want you to correct me on it. For us normal classes, the students that are on my roster when I'm ready to do final grades are students that did not drop when they should have, if they wanted to, did not withdraw when they should have, if they wanted to. So they earned a grade. And what we do is we look at what they earned based on what they did for work. Can people earn an F because they stopped 
attending? Yes, they can. There is some discussion about whether to put their expiration date or the last date of attendance. But for normal classes, if they're on your roster, they get a grade. Because we're supposed to drop, like the never attended, we have a thing called the census roster. These folks are gone. They're not on your list. So before anybody else, I'm going to turn to Katya and say, how does that work for ISSI? For ISSI students, they need to show up every day. They cannot have absent days. Yeah, that answer your question? Well, what I'm concerned about is what if one of your faculty go, hey, you know, Fred Brown is on this roster, and he never showed up, never did anything. So that kind of... So the dropping and adding enrollment services manage them. That's the information I have now. It's the first time we're doing this online. So we will monitor the droppings very closely, where they're going and where they're adding. We do that face-to-face for ISSI the first day, and then the second day we have rosters that we will need to check every day. So that's my answer. So what I'm hearing and hoping is that what the faculty get is a clean roster at the end of their course. I know it's only a five-day course, but a clean roster. That's correct. Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. They get a clean roster by the end of the course, yes. Okay. Usually Wednesday is the final roster. Okay. So they shouldn't have any issues with people being on there that they have no idea who they are because they've never been there for the most part. It does happen. It does happen. You know, we take, if I remember correctly, we take roll every day, and I take that sheet with my checks for those five days, and then I say this person in the past had done three out of five. We may give them a pass. They did two out of five, no pass. But we have our own attendance list. Our names sometimes we don't recognize, and so sometimes it happens, and we put no pass, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's correct. It happens sometimes, but we keep detailed notes when they are in class, they're not, and when they stop showing up. And I think online this year it will be more will be clearer than face-to-face. I was going to say, probably by going online, it kind of forces everything to be more aligned with what's going on. Here's what I would offer. Students don't slip in and out of classes. Exactly. We don't have people switching from classes when they're not supposed to switch. Right. So this will have better control. And what I want to offer to close out this point is, and I say it to Kata as the faculty in charge on this, lead faculty, listen, I would say to your faculty, if there's someone on here that confuses, you know, I don't know why they're there, then what I would do is I wouldn't necessarily just put the NP, I would no pass. I would look at maybe the never attended. If they were never in there, but for some reason they're on your roster. I hear what you're saying, that that should not happen. But if they do, I would go with never attended as a way, and then allow the administration, enrollment services instruction to go, hey, wait a minute, that can't be true. And they'd say, well, it is. There's a name on my roster and they never came to class. Is there an acronym in A that I can select? No, no, no. Don't even, Sandra, stop that. Can't do that. We got to, we got to stay with just what we're given. The five letters, the five letters in the P and the NP. Okay. So what you're going to do is you'll put your final grades in here. And then what you're going to do, and I can go back to my other. Are you, are you back with me in grade book or did you lose me? I still have that PDF. Oh, okay. So you're not there. Let me do a new share. And now you're there. Yes. Okay. So imagine a whole list of roster of students. You put in your final grade. 
Leave the rest of the stuff alone. You got to submit down here. Now, what I want to share before I hit this, I want to share up here what's up in the green tab. This is grade book final grading. So this is a two-step process. You're going to input grades here, and then you're going to submit grades down here. And I'm speaking this way to be clear because the next step is where I've got a lot over the years as grade book guru, <laughs> I've gotten people get confused by this. So you input a grade here. You're showing that it, you're doing your final grading. Don't go back. Stay in here. And when you're done, you hit the submit button. And when you hit the submit button, it takes you to this page. Now, I'm going to start at the bottom. Obviously, no students are listed because I haven't input anything. So there's nothing done. Go to the top now, and you'll see this is confirmation that you've submitted your grades. So imagine, if you will, down below the Business 100, there's a roster of 20, 25 students with all kinds of letter grades. I can verify what I just did on the previous screen. I can verify I'm here. Say, yep, I like what I've got. These are the grades that these students earned. I then just click Return to Menu because I'm done. So it's a two-step, two-screen process. The previous one, and I, I can do that, do this here, but I wouldn't do it otherwise. I can go back here, and again, you're putting in all your grades, you submit, and then you go to the um, confirmation, and then when you're done, it'll take you back out to your menu. Okay, Is that, does that make sense to everyone? It's yeah. that simple, that simple. And I just, just so you're aware, I am not clicking return to menu. I'm going backwards. The reason is I don't want the system to think I've submitted grades for some that doesn't exist yet. It would, it would bounce me around in other areas, but what it would, what it would do is, so I'm just, if that return to menu would take me back out here. Take me back out here after I go from the um, grade confirmation. Now, Katta, let me ask, do they, do your ISSI folks have a lot of courses for ISSI? Uh, some instructors will have one course, um, others will have two. No more than that, two Canvas shell and two courses to grade on Gradebook. Okay, sounds good. So with that, um, I think I kind of covered everything I need to cover. Is there, are there any questions from anybody? J John, are you going to go over like the um, functions inside the gradebook or? Well, because or, they're only doing the letters, there's not much of the other functions they can, they well, can do. Well, but I was, um, but other people will view this beyond ISSI, this video. Oh. So if oh, you wanted to, or we could just keep it for ISSI. I was kind of well, thinking actually, it for no, no, everybody. No. But, you, you, bring up, you bring up an excellent point. Let me go back in here. Because of our current situation, you all see my gradebook menu of courses, yes? You got? Okay. Yeah. Let me go back to my uh, Business 100 for the summer. Okay. Let me, let me offer to Scott, you bring up a heck of a good point. Under normal circumstances, a face-to-face -face class, like I, I have one, in normal conditions, not EVE, not the Enhanced Virtual Education, but in, in a normal situation of face-to-face, -face, in here, I would use assignment scoring. And what that does is, it, back in your um, setup wizard, there are things that you would create in here. But now given that everything is Eve for the summer and fall, there's no need to do any of that at this point. Um, the functions that are left to do, if I submit here, the functions that are left to do are just setting up your gradebook wizard, which is what I just showed you, and then doing your final grading, because everybody's going to be in Canvas. I don't know, Scott, what else oh, so uh, you don't think people set up? No, I get your point. So if you 
if you do everything in Canvas, because now we're, we're saying that all uh, classes have to have a Canvas shell except for ISP, then probably you would never use this. Like in the past, I would set up assignment categories. And so your recommendation, do it all in Canvas. Yeah. Yep. And then, okay, that makes yeah, sense. That was mostly of us do. We keep everything on Canvas and then we do final grading in Passport, right? Yeah, that, that's the extent of it. Um, what I Just for those of you who might be kind of wondering what the hell we're talking about, <laughs> allow me to, I can quickly share something with you. Um, let me find my face-to-face -face from winter. Okay. This is my face-to-face -face in winter, and takes a moment because you'll notice yeah. these are all my assignments. Mm -hmm. Now, this is before COVID-19. I'm meeting with these students in A211 from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Tuesday and Thursdays, and when they do their work, I go in here and put their grades in so that every day or every week, they can see where their course grade is because these all are all based um, on a category weighting that I do for my um, uh, grading. So I don't want to go into the details of it, but that's what we're talking about here. Right. So the functionality of the Passport Gradebook, not Canvas, Passport Gradebook, there is a functionality at a higher level, but because we're all in Canvas now, there's no need to use any of that. So my right. current face-to-face -face class is set up just like everyone else would be. Right. I just do my final grades in, in Passport Gradebook. The detail of all their assignments and everything, it's over in Canvas. No, that, that makes sense. And actually, John, maybe one tip I would offer on that because I, I started converting, uh, I don't know, a couple quarters as well. I used to set up all my assignments in the Passport Gradebook. But what I do is I take that, um, I download the CSV file from um, Canvas, and then I always add, I open it in Excel, and I usually strip out the extraneous like student ID numbers. Right. I just delete right. those, clear those um, uh, columns. And then right. I usually add a final grade column because it'll, it'll have my, uh, Canvas will give me my total points, and I always base on 700, so I have my little you know, out of 700 points, every 70 points, every 10% is a letter grade. And then I also have the percentage I can look at. What I do is I add a column for final grade, and then I just type in there, A, B, C, D, F. And then I have that open, and then my passport open. The one caution I offer on this is people with um, hyphenated names, people with yeah, names, yeah, yeah, yeah. you sometimes will not have the exact same order in the two grade books. So it's you have to be very careful that you just don't go, you know, column A1 or whatever it is, or row A1, the grade, and then do the same in Passport because sometimes the alphabetizing and different things with names. So you just want to make sure if you do that to make sure it's the exact same person in your two grade books, if that makes sense. Yep. As a matter of fact, just not to go too deep into this let me um, share with you and I can give me a second and to what Scott is referring to um, hang on just guys are really patient I appreciate that Okay, what Scott is referring to is the, um, oops, let's get that out of there. He is referring to this. You see my Excel? Yes. Okay, what Scott's referring to is this is what we pr can produce out of Canvas, mm -hmm. exceptional detail of all of our assignments. And what he's talking about is you delete these columns here. But what, it, what this lacks is, <coughs> excuse me, um, the final letter grade. So what I do, similar to what Scott just mentioned, is I come up in here and I clean up uh, 
the extra stuff and then I freeze the column on that side mm -hmm. and then I get over here and there are my letter grades. And to your point, you got to watch with the hyphenated names because mm -hmm. they could be under the first name or could be under the last name. I'm not quite sure who decides that. Yeah. Are we looking at the last column of your page? Because the last column is not on the screen. We're seeing the middle of your Excel file, like uh, BH, BI, BJ, BK, BL. You don't see the rest of these? No, I don't know why. Why don't you see the rest of these? Well, maybe if I do it this way. Hold on. And then just do this. Do you see final course grade now? No, we still just see the middle of your Excel sheet. I don't huh. know why. I have no idea why that is. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> On the other I'm thing... speechless. Okay. But anyways, the point is, is that the, the last numeric grade uh, column is your final course grade numerically, and then the next column you just add to create a place to put the letter grades. Right. And then just match that up to what you're doing in Canvas. Sorry hey, about that. Yeah, no, that's okay. John, the other tip I was going to say is, like you, I have a lot of assignments. And so sometimes if I'm just trying to get to the final grades, I might delete some of those columns or, you know, copy certain columns over so I could have the, the final grades next to the student's name. Because... Um, and, and you can customize, but I just think sometimes, you know, there's a lot of information and I, you know, at the final grade level, I just want a few key items. So you can well, always customize. I, I have no idea what you can see of this now. Yeah. You see column A and then AP? We see, no, it's still stuck on A, Y, A, Z, B, A, B, 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 C. Well, A, Y is the one with the letter grade. Anyways, look oh, at, it's... Oh. In the view, in Excel, quick Excel lesson. Yeah. In the view, you can freeze panes. Okay. And you can do the freeze of the row. What you do is you keep, and it's done in your uh, uh, page layout section. So I freeze column A, which is your student names, so that I can literally scroll everything over to it. Oh, perfect. You know, so. Yeah. If you, I don't, I'm just going to show this. There should be only three columns with data. One that's crunched, A, then AX and AY. Those are the only columns I'm showing right now. We still we see the whole sheet. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're, oh, you know why? It's been paused. Oh. 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 Uh, oh, oh. My bad. My bad. Okay. You guys speak ill of me. <laughs> okay. Do you see it now? Yep. Yeah. So what I did, what yeah. I did was... I collapsed A because I don't want you seeing the names. And then this is the final course grade and then the, the letter grade. And I'm just oh, going to... Okay. So if I get down to here, this is literally all of the sections that they're graded on. Because I do a category weighting. Everything's 100 points, but then the weight. So these are the ones. And then, of course, imagine these names being opened up a little further, mm -hmm. you could see all their names and what their grades are. So that's the way I set that up. That's really handy. Yeah, you know, if anybody ever wants, just get in touch and I'll, I'll walk you through it. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't see that it was paused. Um, so with that, I'm going to come back out here. Um, questions? Any, I see there's a lot in the chat room. Anything of importance in there? No, it's all old stuff, so. Okay. So, uh, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, is the passport grade required? The Canvas grading is not the final step. The, is the passport grade the final step for the school? Yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. Because what for those of us that have been around for many years, the old grade book, passport school grade book, was a little bit more old fashioned. And um, the reason it was, in many ways, people thought easier mm -hmm. is because it was just the grades. They were manually listed, you submitted them, and then they were manually input. Well, now this grade book, it integrates what you put in for grades 
and they once it's verified confirmed and verified they are then uploaded to transcripts so this is a far more uh, robust process culminating in two things coming together integrated completely so if you ever hear from people because you've been naughty and haven't submitted your grades on time we need your grades yeah we need them because we got to get all the grades in so that we can then upload verify upload upload verify and then process the actual transcripts so it's definitely a requirement <laughs> Is this required like is it required like at the end of the quarter or is this something that needs to be ongoing it's when your course is over I, w I thought about how to answer that obviously if you have a 12-week course you're not submitting final grades at week three but for canvas uh, the canvas use I'm thinking with ISSI are some courses like just on Tuesday and Wednesday Kata? No, we will have Monday, Friday, but I want to say like, for example, in my regular courses, I need to keep up the gradebook update with grades for assignments and stuff like that. And then you will have a final grade in Canvas and you enter in Passport the final grade as well, right? Right, the, yeah. final, the final grade. Yeah, but, but what I thought Solange was asking is the ongoing grading and keeping it current if you're submitting only final grades in grade passport gradebook that's all you're putting in it's in canvas that you would want to maintain currency for your students yeah okay just yeah, want to make yeah. sure for easy courses we'll have monday to friday and um, the assignments in for easy is the attendance so every mm. day the instructors will enter the attendance uh, in Canvas, and then at the end, they will enter the final grade in Passport. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, John. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, I didn't John. I want to like own the, the the workshop, but you answered a lot of questions for us. Thanks. I hope so, but. Well, you and Kata, you and I can talk about if we want to do a separate, just standalone video for the ISSI folks. We can do that as well. And I just want to comment and commend Henry. You win the best, uh, most impressive academic backdrop. All those books behind you. I I want to. I think Amber's office is pretty, pretty cool. Oh, yeah. All the the text. I think it's it's very yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then. Elizabeth has got all kinds of stuff back behind her. Lord knows what all that is. <laughs> Can't it look. looks like she keeps plants alive better than I do. Uh. No, it's my dining room. It's my counter in the back. Oh, okay. But, but I do have my, my portable Dexter with me. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, so he's home because of all the labs that oh. we have to do and Jeez. all the kits. Yeah. That's so, okay. I know. So they, so I demonstrate and the students do it with their type of dance in their classroom. So oh, wow. anyhow, um, <laughs> you know what? I do have one question on the sure. high school. Um, they do dual enroll, you know, for our, the dual enrolled students, not my college class one, mm -hmm. positive attendance. They have not taken regular attendance on the students this semester. And, um, so I have like 96 hours for the uh, high school dental one, and then the dental two is 117 hours, and my dental three is right around the same of that. How am I supposed to, I mean, I, I have the assignments, I have their work, am I just supposed to put in those hours because this last nine weeks have been crazy? Uh, um, I would offer this. First and foremost, I have no idea what you should do with that. I would go to the instruction office, seek guidance from, um, you know, one of the uh, Sarah or um, Sarah Kelsey or one of the deans. Okay. Uh, your dean, maybe they can help. Um, work maybe. your work your way up that chain uh, of command, if you will, to find out the best way to to fix that. 
Yeah, because I, I know I have this. We just had our um, CTE meeting at the high school, and that was the big thing. And I said, yes, I was doing this grade book. So I was wondering how they wanted us to report those hours. If, if I may, off, off, the, off the top of my head, that if you have documentation by what they've done mm -hmm. and the attendance and all that, of being present in their class and the assignments, I would recommend, I would see that as being attending. Okay. So that, okay. that's just, that's just the way I'm looking at that, you know. Okay. Cece? Nope, can't hear you. Uh, Cece? Yes. Oh, no worry, you understand, I understood. No worry, thank okay. you. Just wanted thank to make sure. Much. Okay. Yeah. No, that was my big thing, you know, thank you, Scott. Thanks mm -hmm. for all the, um, videos that you've posted I keep sharing them with the high school people so they can figure this out because I think they're going canvas next year um, and I know at least the dual enrolled yep. students are so it's good so yep. thank you sure and Elizabeth if I may Elizabeth mm -hmm. dual enrollment I did a video in a workshop for them a couple years back and that stuff is still current okay if, if you have that link I have an on, um, it's in Google Classroom, but it's an online resource page that we have so the high school can hmm. share all of that stuff. If you do it, I'll put it in the Canvas one, if you just share me that link. How about you send me an email? Okay. And I'll send you, it's not a link, it's, it's, a, it's a file. Okay, perfect. And, and I'll put it in there. Okay. And that way they'll have that access. So thank you. I appreciate you guys' help. And. Uh -huh. uh, we appreciate what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you later. You guys okay. stay okay. nice meeting you. Thanks. Bye. Anybody else with questions? Anybody? Thank you both. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thank really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I'll um, you good? share the video. Yeah, I'm good. Thank Henry's you. good? Yep. Henry's not going to yeah. acknowledge me. Oh. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs>